All right, so welcome back to the Love Coding. In today's video, we're going to learn how to do the dark mode with Tailwind.css. So, and here's the demo look like. So as you can see, so we have a navigation that can do the toggle between the dark mode and the light mode. So as you can see right here. All right, so let's do that. All right, so here I'm using VS Code, so you can use any tag that you want. And so this is just a uh, boilerplate from Create React App. So at the moment, it just display the H1 right here. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to install the uh, Tailwind into our project. So we're going to config, set up, then push our Tailwind.css. So what you need to do, you need to add all of the dependency. So I leave the link, I leave that in the description as well. So the first one, I'm going to do the Tailwind.css, post CSS, as you can see under here. And we're going to do the push CSS that we're going to remove the undo CSS as well. So let's go ahead and install this one. And I have already installed that. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to run npx tailwind css init dash dash full. So then we get uh, every configuration from the tailwind, like everything. So this one, if you don't add full, this one is gonna be blank. So all right. So the next, we going, I'm going to create uh, post uh, css. So then we can compile this one. So post css.configs.js. So let's see. So right here, I'm gonna close our terminal. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm uh, I'm gonna import our tailwind that we just installed CSS equal to require tailwind.css, and we're going to add some plugins so that uh, we can compile this one. So then we can do plugins. And it's going to be array. So the first one is going to be require the auto prefixer. So this is allowed to have WebKit and stuff like that. And the next thing is we're going to do is we're going to have the uh, the Tailwind. So it's not going to require. It's going to be our Tailwind right here. And then the file that we just generate using the uh, npx Tailwind. So it's going to be tailwinds.configs.js. And the next thing is we're going to do the purge CSS. So I'm going to copy and paste. Uh, what uh, I have done. So this is just the remove. So we use the uh, full purge this here. So we got every file.js and then the public also. And then this is the class that we're going to remove. So this one. And the next thing is we need to do is to uh, I have created a style folder right here that contain the main CSS and the tailwind.css. So we're going to compile our uh, tailwind. CSS to the main CSS right here. So I'm going to uh, let's see Tailwind installation right here. So you need to copy this one. So this is uh, base component utility from Tailwind, and you uh, paste it right here into the Tailwind.css. All right. So next we need to add our scripts. Uh, we you go to scripts. I'm gonna close this one so we can see this one. Uh, we go to script and then we're gonna write the script our post CSS to compile from the tailwind to the main.css. So the name of the script you can call whatever you want. So I'm gonna call build CSS. And then uh, what I need to do next is I'm gonna do post CSS. So I'm target this source. So source slash um, folder gonna be styles uh, tailwind uh, dot CSS. And then it's going to be an output dash o. It's going to go exact same locations but different files. So it's going to go into main dot css. So there we go. All right. So next we're going to use our command to build uh, the, the tailwind into our main dot css. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do yon run uh, build css. Oops, it's uh, build css. So after we got build, we need to put that in the global. So what I'm going to do is go into the index.js. I'm going to import uh, styles and then we're going to target our main.css. So right now, if we go back into here and then if we refresh, we could see that our Tailwind config is uh, set up correctly. Uh, and I want to show you one thing is like if you can right now, if I try to do something with Tailwind, let's say I do the BG blue 400. Right now, if we go back, we cannot see that. The reason is because uh, we're using purge CSS. It's going to remove the things that we did not use. So, so right now, what we need to do is we need to first, we do not purge it unless we do in production. So we're going to use the Tailwind first. Uh, after that, when it 
uh, bill so that we can check which class that we use and which class we didn't use and then we're gonna remove that so to do that we need to go into the post.css uh, config right here we need to tell that this one it's going to need only the node env right here is equal into the productions so if it's production we do this otherwise we do not do we just it blank right here so this is going to do unless we in production so right now if we go to package.json json i'm going to add the, another command that is going to be a production build so you can actually call this whatever you want and then what we're going to do we're going to do note uh, env equal to productions and then you can do yarn run uh, build uh, CSS and yarn run build. So next uh, we need to yarn run build again. So so then when we build, so right now if we use this command, it's not going to purge uh, the CSS. So it's going to uh, uh, it's purge only in production. So I'm going to do yarn run build. Uh, CSS again. So now we're going to have the uh, background blue right here. Right now, if I refresh back, we should see the background blue. Uh, let's see. I think there's some compiling right here. All right. So you can see right now we have the background blue. So it means like our uh, setup is correct. All right. So with the Tailwind 2.0, so for the dark mode is really simple. All you need to do, you need to uh, put the docs uh, in front of this one and then you can specify when it's dark we're doing something like this like when we do like the breakpoint as well and for to do that first we need to put the our root element with the class name of docs and then that's all that we need to do and also when we want to do toggling manually we need to change from the dark mode right here to class all right so let's do that uh go back into the tailwind config right here so this is four i'm going to change this one to class and then we need to do the yarn run build css so then we can use this one so for now uh when we unload so what i'm going to do now when we unload i'm going to load this one into the dark mode so then we can see that so for that uh, i'm going to create the hooks for this one and then i'm going to call this one use dark mode JS and then I'm going to do OFC all right so I'm going to this one we don't need it we don't need it so what I'm going to do is we're going to do use effects and then what we can do is to uh, let's see this one and then we're going to do const root and equal to uh, window dot document dot document element and then we're going to do root dot uh, class list not access key uh, class list dot uh, add so we're gonna add the class so it's gonna be dark and then just like that so for now I'm just uh, doing the make sure that the dark mode is work so right now I'm gonna do this one text to blue 600 but when on dark mode it's gonna be text y so text y and also for this one as well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the class name of this one is gonna be uh, flex I'm going to do a little bit of styling center and then the mid high screen and when it's going to dark mode it's going to have the BG to uh, black okay so right now if I refresh on load all right so right now this one is going to be a light mode so when in, in dark mode what I'm going to do I'm going to call call use dark mode right here and there we go so that's it so right now uh, it's work because of the we have this one so we can just the set this one to dark it's, it's work uh, this one is text y that's why it's not working so for now I'm going to text y x also that's a little bit bigger so as you can see we just by adding the class name to the root it's enable dark mode so the next thing is what I'm going to do is to toggling this one and store this one in the local storage so um, for that this one instead of the magic keyword right here much <laughs> so I'm gonna store this one in the state so set seams uh, equal to use state and then I'm gonna equal pass this one for now we can actually uh, read this one from local storage for now I'm just doing the docs first and then this one we're gonna do just seams and then we're gonna set the seam for this one so whenever the, ch the seam is changed this component is gonna be uh, re-render so I'm gonna return 
the set seams. So the set seam is going to check uh, the color that opposite from the current seams right now. So which I'm going to do. So the color seams that we're going to change is equal to. So we need to check our seams right now. If the seam right now is equal to dark. So then we're going to uh, return the light. And then if it the L is going to be dark right here. Cool. So then we're going to have this one as well, the color seams. Great. Um, then we're going to do that in the navigation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do in here. Uh, let's say the navigation. I'm, actually, I'm going to create another component for this one. So component. And then I'm going to do now. Uh, .js. I'm going to do OFC for now. I'm going to remove this one. And then we're going to have the span that uh, this one I'm going to have the uh, the icon that I'm going to use so right here this is going to be a light icon and then there's one more is going to be a dark, uh, dark icon so this one okay so then I'm going to copy and paste this guy into this one and then I'm going to import this one into the our apps so right now we go back into apps I'm going to pass the nav right here and I'm going to do a little bit of styling for the nav right here. So I'm going to give the class name of this one. is going to be fix top zero. And then I'm going to do BG to the blue uh, 100. And the width is going to be full as well. So uh, there we go. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to do some styling for this one. Uh, so I, actually, I'm going to use this dark mode right here inside the navigation. So use the dark mode inside the navigation and then I'm going to have the color of the color seams and then we can have the set seams that come out from this one so then we can change from this one we can do if the color seam is equal to dark uh, let's see dark is we going then I think it look, when we go to light and then we're going to render this uh, image right here this SVG uh, let's see this SVG L if it's equal to dark we're gonna render the dark color uh, the dark uh, the SVG so right now when we in the dark mode we should have the icon lights so then we can switch to that so in this one I'm gonna do the P for part in for this file I'm gonna do some styling to this one a little bit so with 10 height 10 and again will BG uh, indigo 500 and then we're gonna do block so otherwise not gonna show and then also I'm gonna do round it to full. So then if we have a round it and we have the shadow, cost the pointer, so we have the pointer. Okay, so it's not going to the center. I'm gonna give this the color white. And also we're gonna do flex, uh, item center, and then justify center. Then everything is going to center. Okay, so next, we, when we click on this one, we need to uh, change uh, the back, uh, change this one to the light seams. So to do that, we, what we can do is uh, right now, yeah, we can just do that. So this one, when on click, uh, let's see when we on click this one. Oh, what we're gonna do is to set the seam is equal to the color seams, and this one should be like this. Okay. So right now, if I click in here, you can see in the class right here we add the class dark and the light. So what we need to do is we need to remove the dark class. So we go back into this one. We're gonna do root dot class list dot remove the color seams that we have right here, and then we add the seam that we just changed, and then we just put a color seam in here. Right now, as you can see, we toggle between this one. Nice. And if you want to have the animation uh, transition, so you need to just add the transition. You can specify any duration you want, and then if I refresh. Not bad. and then as you can see there we go so right now if I want to go this one we're gonna need store and local storage so when the user come back it stay in the dark mode so to do that in here when we what we're gonna do if we go to local storage and then we set items and this is the key of that it's gonna be seams with the current seam that we have now and then so when it's on load right here we can read from this one from the seams so Alright, so right now, if we refresh this one, it's going to add this one to our uh, local storage. As you can go, seam, and we have the seam is dark. Alright, that's good. So now if I close this one, if I open it again, 
So right now I think our seam is gonna be dark. Okay, nice. I think that's pretty much it for this video and uh, that's it. Thank you for watching until the end. All right, see you guys in the next video.